Paul Joseph Watson brought this up from, uh, you know, you can check him out. He's a really great commentator. But I love how he's responding to this person named Prez, who was like, the idiocy on the right has hit a new level. Now they claim a vaccine passport is coming much like the mark of the beast. No vaccine, no purchase power. Hell, that should be the law anyway. Jesus not coming for any of these folks anyway. And I think that the leftists are missing the point that this vaccine passport and people freaking out and calling it the mark of the beast is actually a lot of people who are calling it this probably aren't even Christians. It's just rhetorically referencing of some sort of a, a, a new system of credit mm -hmm. that excludes people who are not given into state mandates and state controlled power. And it's just like a metaphor people are using. And I like how Paul Joseph Watson's like, well, leftists say there's no mark of the beast. Don't be insane. And then they also, in the same sentence, are like, of course, you should be forced to undergo a government medical procedure by law in order to be able to buy and sell. We are going so backwards in our society where we are headed into a two tier system. If you haven't heard about this, ladies and gentlemen, they are uh, pr pr promoting and the Biden administration, even though they're not taking responsibility, which is we're going to read this right now. It says White House leaves vaccine passports to the private sector. The government is suggesting that our society develop a credit system that shows whether or not you can participate in society. And before we jump into this and you go, oh, that's not crazy. No, it is. And on that note, welcome back to Slightly Offensive. This is the best worst show on Blaze TV. We always have confetti of color and that's a huge explosion right over our faces as I read you this amazing, uh, amazing section of, of, of article. It literally says this in CBS. Check this out right here. As more countries like Japan, China, and Denmark plan to introduce vaccine passports for their citizens, Americans are beginning to wonder if they too will have to show some sort of proof of vaccination or similar ID to travel, attend events, and then this little caveat here, they just throw it in so casually, work, aka provide a, provide a, a means of, of, of living, mm -hmm. or generally participate in society. Like, I, you stupid Americans, you're worried that we're moving in a future where if you don't give into government mandates and, and requirements for your health, that you can't make a living and or do anything in society? Psh, you guys are crazy. It's like, what happened to this whole my body, my choice thing? I know that people bring that up all the time. And I see it sometimes and I go, and I roll my eyes. But honestly, it, it, I mean, it's applicable here, is it not? Mm -hmm. I mean, you and I have talked about this before, how even on, on the show, actually, how you and I are, neither of us are anti-vax, but we're anti this vax in the sense that it's not been tested enough. I think that there, there's a lot of things that that the wider population doesn't know. But this this scares me, right? Because... Um, people pointed out that, you know, in order to go to countries like Africa or many of the third world countries and developing countries, you do have to get particular vaccines in order to go because you are at risk of legitimately dying if you contract Ebola, for example, or whatever. I don't actually, is there a vaccine for Ebola? Uh, prob think. There's probably some sort of treatment, <laughs> but I mean like Ebola, yeah, is like a, like a cataclysmic death. It, well, it doesn't but, discriminate. Right. It causes I, major issues with pregnancy. I mean, it's, this is like something You bleed that, from your eyes and your ears. I mean, whatever, but. Pretty gross. <laughs> But it's one of those things, right, where the, the survival rate of Ebola if is, and people can correct me on this, but I'm fairly sure it's somewhere in the realm of 50%. So if you contract Ebola, you will die. Like there's a really strong likelihood that you will die. Whereas with what we have at the moment with the sniffles is, I mean, like it has the same survival rate as the flu. No one's making you walk around with a, you know, a vaccine passport for the flu. I have never in my life gotten a flu vaccine. Never. Not once. I'm happy that I have, you know, some of the other ones, like you know, the ones that you get as a child, like whooping cough, etc., because I do think that there is a place for those. However, I mean, you're telling me that I that I can't go to work, that I can't go to a sports match, that I can't do this and that and the other for a virus that has the same survival rate as the flu. And now you want me to carry around a piece of paper like my documentation in Nazi Germany. Oh, here you go, officer. Like, you know, oh, now can I come in? Thank you. I mean, like, realistically, people who think this is a good idea, I have such trouble with this. I have such trouble with this. Well, and really you know, do. because you've, because the reason why I get nervous about this, I'm going to, I want to get into a little bit about you being banned from like, from card providers and service providers of money. Mm -hmm. This is an idea of consolidating power so that you can mm -hmm. actually control what people can do and where they can roam and, and what access they have to, to your country and to the, the services they offer. This is not anything new. This has always been what totalitarian societies do. Mm -hmm. And I want to play you. This is a very interesting thing. In fact, along with the vaccine passport, they are developing a new a new payment processing method that is involving your, uh, like, maybe it's microchips, maybe it's your palm print. I'm not entirely sure, but of course, no shocker here, Amazon is behind it. Oh, of course. Uh, I want to play you a video, and a lot of big guys might be shocked by this, but this is the new payment processor that Amazon is developing uh, that they want to roll out across the country. Let's, let's, this is called Amazon One, already very weird name. This is Zoe. Just like you, she uses lots of different cards and IDs to get through her day. 
What if all Zoe needed was herself? Introducing Amazon One, a free service that lets you use your palm to quickly pay for things, gain access, earn rewards, gain and more. access. Let's say you're grabbing your favorite coffee beverage, mm -hmm. or heading into the office. I hate this. Or checking out. Just hover your palm and you're on your way. I hate it's this. It's as easy I as hate that. This. Sign up is free <laughs> and takes less than a minute. Takes less All than you a minute. Need is a credit card, your phone oh, number, and your palm. That's it. Since your palm is unique and can't be lost or misplaced, you can get things done quickly and securely. And with more experiences on the way, Amazon <laughs> One will not, help you get even good. more done. This is not good. by being you. Yeah. Now, that... <laughs> Zoe has more time to do what she loves. Oh, indoor man. Indoor skydiving. All right. That can't, Enter, nothing, nothing can go wrong here. And pay with nothing can go wrong here. Oh, my God. Did you even know this existed? No. I feel <laughs> so like... Bad. I feel... Because I got really mad last week. Oh like, I, I had my, leg. Like, at life moment and so I, I've been taking a break I've been trying to not be as online because I want to maintain my mental health so I know I, this is all new to me I'm you're 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 basically surprising me which I feel like is very hard to do these days <laughs> but people never realize that this stuff could be abused they go oh but I just have one palm Sydney oh it's fine oh we already give our fingerprint Sydney oh it's it's fine but it's like do you not understand that the more information the government... The government is not trustworthy. These ma massive corporations are not trustworthy. Why do people not realize this? They don't care about you as a consumer. They care about making money. You are you are all you are is a a way of making money. You are the conduit between them and money. That and you give all your you palm. Are. And it's like, th that's what I want to get into you is like, you go, well, like I get the convenience, right? So I want to be fair with this. Like I get there's this human method with the mm -hmm. economy, like you said to increase efficiency. Yes. And so there's a desire then to say like, well, what's, wh how can we cut down like times in line? How can we create a, a quick exchange of products? Like mm -hmm. I, I understand the reasoning behind this. So it's like, yeah, let's just wave a palm and be gone. Or you could just wave your credit card. Right. But even then, I mean, people, you, you, you can go back and back and say, oh, well, the Christians and conservatives were freaking out about the NPC, the NPC code and there are or the barcode and the RFID and different types of chips. So this is just them freaking out. But people like, you know, because you've actually been banned from using certain big tech apps and payment processors yes. that they can literally X you out of society using your own personal information that you gave them. Yeah, exactly. No, you're exactly right. I mean, I actually didn't make that connection until you just said that. But yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, I have actually been banned, <laughs> been banned from so many things, including PayPal, actually, for a period there. But if you think about this realistically, say that Amazon, for whatever reason, goes, OK, you're a yucky user, because they will at some point. They'll go, no, we don't want these far right extremists using our platform. Boom, done. Like, that's it. And then you get cut off. And then so rightly, like you said, if your information, if your credit card provider and Amazon have this weird little connection working and then it's all predicated on you using your palm, then really what's to say that that at some point they just go, oh, you can't use it, our card anymore. You can't use this platform anymore. And, and then you're cut off. I mean, I think that the more power that you give, and this is why monopolies are bad, right? This is why people have always said that monopolies are bad because once you've monopolized some part of the of the marketplace or you know wh whatever particular niche area you're in or you know as you expand, as you monopolize, it means that it's harder and harder to get away from these companies and these institutions. And then the net effect of that is that when you do eventually get axed out and xed out, which you will at some stage, because we're kind of heading in that direction, um, you have nowhere else to go. And I think that that is hugely problematic. A great philosopher once said that you can be two out of three things, liberal, smart, or honest, but you can't be all three. At Slightly Offensive, we're smart and honest. And if you like this clip, head over to Slightly Offensive YouTube channel by clicking right here, where you can find new episodes of our show weekly. We're bringing you the topics, news stories, and angles that will have you saying, why the hell wasn't I subscribed sooner? Also, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to this channel too.